if you're talking about the four subgroups that we did in people with purely mid-portion Achilles tendinopathy, we have a what we call a younger activity dominant group. These are the individuals, they're generally young, younger, they are about 68% of them identify as runners. Um, and when you're looking at their profile, they don't have that much symptoms, but they have symptoms. They have fairly good function. Their tendon structure is not that bad. They don't have a lot of fear, um, but they do have the symptoms and probably be active, right? So this is kind of what was interesting was when we saw this, I'm like, oh yeah, I know this patient. It's the one that started running. They don't have a lot of problems, but now they can't run. And maybe they are, you know, there's not a lot of deficits to work on in the various areas, but maybe it is more modifying their activity level. So, mm -hmm. you know, recovery days and those things. Then the second group that kind of spun off of that was, we call it more function dominant. And it's kind of similar to the first, but they're slightly older. And they start to show more functional deficits. So they have more uh, calf muscle weakness. They have more problems with, with the function than the activity dominant. But in general, they have symptoms. The structure may be a little bit more changed. Not that lot of psychological variables, like very high, the fear of movement and things too. They're also about 68% runners, identify as runners. Um, so this is kind of maybe, maybe the more older athletes and things too, that have a more, you might need to work a little bit more thinking about their functional problems in the evaluation. And then the third group ended up what we call, we call them the, the um, psychological dominant, I think we call them. And that basically is a group that has, I think like 30% runners or something, but there are actually more females. Um, they had their kind of variable of identity is more higher fear of movement. So higher Tampa scale of kinesiophobia, fear of movement, being catastrophizing. They have a fair amount of symptoms. They have a fair amount of functional deficit, um, but the structure is not that bad. You know, the tendon structure doesn't look, you know, too thick or too changed, not that much pathology. So they're more like this, more um, the fear of movement and there's more females in this group. They're also a little older. And then the fourth group is uh, what we call structural dominant. And, and, and it's basically the group with horrible looking tendons, if you think about it. Like when they come in and you see the back of their Achilles tendon, they look really thick, like this thick, large tendon, really tender in this area. And that was the smallest group. None of those was considered runners. Um, they were generally uh, overweight or obese males. They were, uh, so their structural didn't look very good. Uh, they had problems with function. They did not have a lot of fear of movement and things too, right? They had some symptoms, but the symptoms were, the structure was really what was driving them more so than the symptoms. So this is a, like a different group. So it's kind of nice to see these four different groups.